Hi guys, this is Tito Miles. And this is Tita Josie. And welcome to our channel. So today, because Game Boys uh, isn't showing just yet, like um, I don't think we have the actual airing date of Alt Game Boys Episode 13 just yet. But, uh, you yeah. know, Tito, Miles, and I wanted to do something special, um, you know, because it is a Sunday. And, um, you know, we're not exactly feeling sepanks because we know that there is going to be Alt Game Boys and a Season 2 that's coming up. We still have Pearl next door, but those things aren't showing today right but we still wanted to do something yes. um, you know a little bit different on our channel uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be reviewing fuck boys uh, which i'm sure that if you are a game boys fan or if you're a fan of corn things uh you know or even in between and my extraordinary uh, you know those all have like they're all bls with connections to fuck boys and we'll explain that in a little bit uh, we actually wanted to do something different today and not review or react to a bl but but react to, um, you know, um, a cinematic piece or a movie, not react, okay. sorry, review a movie uh, that has a lot of BL connections. And that's Fuck Boys. And I think a lot of you have already watched it. And uh, joining us today, we actually have a special guest, Tito Miles. Uh, oh my you know, goodness, we, our we first have... special guest. <laughs> yeah, our first collab. <laughs> Um, yeah, our first collab is not going to be like with, um, you know, another reactor. Our first collab is actually going to be with, uh, you know, one of my uh, closest and dearest friends. Uh, his name is Orlia Gawin. Um, and I uh, I think before today, uh, you haven't actually met him yet, Tito Miles yet, right? Uh, no, not not in person. But yeah. yes, we work at the same department. Yeah, all three of us work. Yeah. We, we all worked in the same company before and Orly is actually very well known in like theater circles in um, you know in um, in entertainment uh, circles especially like um, you know for indie films um, you know he is a very well known reviewer of uh, theater productions as well as uh, you know um, cinematic uh, productions especially for festivals like Cinemalaya and I, I think Miles you uh, in Countered a review that Orly did before um, that you mentioned you saw on TFC, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. I was, yeah, on TFC, and then all of a sudden in introduced nung host, I can't remember who, si Orly. So na message ako sa para, hey, Tita Josie, oh, si Orly yeah, is on yeah. TFC. Yeah. Awesome. For a film, I think it's for General Luna. Or yeah. Luna. Yes, yeah. We can yeah. double check with, with Orly later. Yes. So, you know, we're very, very excited to have Orly Agawin, um, you know, my dear, dear friend, join us today. And uh, he will be helping us provide, you know, a more structured, uh, you know, review to Fuck Boys. You know, it's not just going to be me screaming all the time or Milo crying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he'll be providing a little bit more of a backbone, you know, to, <laughs> to our reviews. And yeah, let's all welcome Tito Orly. Woo! Hi! Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. Hello, Tita Josie. Hello, Tito Miles. Hi, Orly. I'm so happy to have you on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I've been watching your your reaction vlogs and, you know, it's, you. It, it's, 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 it's brilliant. It's exhilarating. It's more of like validate the emotions that you felt where I watch it. I watch BLs alone. Yeah. And I really wow. appreciate you for, you know, making an effort of doing something like this for not just for the younger generations, but also for people like us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That yeah. Natin, yeah. Also in the, who are also into BLs. Exactly, exactly. I turned to <laughs> Am I reacting? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you're reacting to an introduction. I think it's a little bit too early for that. <laughs> but but yeah, like um, you know, I think that um, that you actually um, reviewed Fuck Boys when it first came out. Um, you know, when it was part of uh, the Cinemalaya Film Fest last year, if I'm not mistaken, right, Orly? Yes, that's correct. Um, I watched it in in. In Glorieta, no. So, mm, okay. Um, um, 
napagod na rin akong manood ng Cinemalaya pag yeah, sa CCP yeah. because ang haba ng pila, maraming tao and all. But still, you know, experiencing Cinemalaya yeah. and CCP is a different thing. I mean, that's really where Cinemalaya should be. But for Fuck Boys, I was able to catch it in Glorieta. Right, right, right. And uh, yeah, uh, I was alone. I was, you know, I was in a in in a very unlikely place considering yeah. it was a Cinemalaya festival. So it it was when when i first saw it like the ganap talaga ako na makakausap no and there yeah 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 was uh, there was a post screening discussion after the run mm, and okay. uh, ako yung nagfacilitate ng discussion na yon and, nice. and, and you know, surprisingly it, you know yes what was it with the production staff or with the the crew no. as well because i know that you normally do that as well too right you uh, you kind of yeah. like facilitate discussions with the people who actually create the the, the films and with the the production right yeah, yeah, but it's with, but it's in coordination with CCP itself. Mm, okay, so it's okay. the CCP who set up that discussion, so and they for, would normally do that. Uh, sorry, just to, to add for our international viewers, CCP stands for the Cultural Center of the uh, Philippines. Yeah. So they're like the main, um, you know, um, the main. Uh, they're a government organization, right? Um, and yeah. they kind of like proliferate the arts, uh, particularly theater, film, um, and any artistic endeavors throughout the Philippines. So, so that's what uh, Orly means. Yeah. Um, and Cinemalaya is actually Orly, the. So is yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Is is this how Cinemalaya uh, gets? Uh, I don't know. Like discussed. I mean. Like after every film, merit ba talagang discussion forum or do you really have to facilitate one after well, every every screen? Yeah, well before wala no. Um, you just watch and then you know you watch yeah. the next film. So it's more of like a, it's actually a film festival. So you yeah. watch like right. you start watching at ten a.m. Mm-hmm. and then have a quick fifteen minute break and then after that watch the next film. And watch yeah. the next uh-huh. film. So generally, meron ka mapaparod na four to five films in a day. Yeah. So you'll right. be done by 11 p.m. And then the, yeah. you go back the following day and complete again the next uh-huh. round of films that will be shown the following day. <clears throat> and that's how it is in, in CCP. If you go to CCP, you might want to catch the entire, uh, everything that's going to be shown for the entire day. So, um, but for this year, I mean, you know, I, I, I was very, for last year, I was very busy. And uh, the good thing about Cinemalaya was that CCP, the Cultural Center of the Philippines, cannot fully accommodate all the people mm. who could watch the film. So they, 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 they would partner with different cinemas and theat- uh, theater companies in the Philippines, like in, in, in Glorieta. They also had, I believe, in Cebu. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pa some, ano, they also have uh, they also have partnership with Ayala Malls in, in, in Laguna. So that, I mean, you know, Para mas lumawak yung yeah, sakop yeah. ng Cinemalaya. And uh, before, we wouldn't have those, uh, I mean, quick discussion forums. There would be discussions and conversations yeah. after after the screening. But, you know, it, it's not quite formal. There would be talks, no? Uh, that would run parallel to the screening. Yeah. And that would be done. In, and, and it could be some other things. Like yung sino ang bibigyan ng Lifetime Achievement Award this year for film. Ganyan. So, mm-hmm. so may mga ganyan. Um, but now, um, the, the organizers, uh, I mean, found, 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 found value in, in, in immediate conversations. I mean, yeah, yeah. Talking about the films that you have just saw, uh, that you just saw, and, you know, and, and, and that's and that's where the, the, the yeah. newer conversations come in. So nandito yung mga estudyante and they really talk about it. And 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 I think that's 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 the beauty of of, of art. Eh. Diba? Yeah, yung, yeah. Pag the experience mo siya, you talk about it. Yeah. And, and that's where yeah. value and meaning comes come to life. Yeah. You know, and yun. Isa sa mga na atinan ko ay yung fuckboys, no? Yeah. Na, na discussion. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, um, if I remember correctly, you would mainly post your reviews on your blog, um, you know, uh, jellicleblog.com. Uh, yeah. You know, whether it was for theater productions or whether it was for Cinemalaya, and I would see your posts on Facebook as well. Uh, but they would always, like, go back to your blog. But, um, you know, I think you and I were chatting the other day, um, you know, since the 
all of the lockdowns happened and all of this stuff, uh, you, you know, obviously uh, there hasn't really been a lot of films that have come out. There really hasn't been like a lot of, um, you know, uh, theater productions that have done anything uh, in actual theaters because it's not allowed, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, like the review scene has kind of gone quiet. And, um, you know, in this period, though, is when the BLs came in um, and all of these reaction videos and all of the reactors started coming in. So that's kind of like still showing how there is an evolution of reviews and reactions and that kind of stuff, even as uh, we have these lockdowns in the Philippines and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, nakagulat, no? Yung, yung pagpasok ng PL. And uh, from what I know, na- nanggaling to sa ibang ibang bansa. Thai ba to? Thai, ang original Thailand. Yung Thailand. Yeah. Korea. Yeah. Yun, yeah. Japan also, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Japan, yeah. Mm. Japan. And it's oh, amazing. Yeah, and- Yeah, Thai BL is influenced by Japanese. Yeah. Uh, yaoi. Yaoi. Yeah. I think that's how they pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. I see. So, so there. Um, and, um, and so, uh, we, like, to be honest, me and Milo, uh, like, I, I, I've heard of Cinemalaya for, like, years now. Like, you know, since it ever, since it first came out. I think I might have watched, like, uh, you know, a few films, uh, but not, like, a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, but mm-hmm. the only reason I wanted the to watch, one. yeah, yeah, the the only one, the only reason I wanted to watch Fuck Boys is because of its BL connection. So I'm not like one of those that actually watched Fuck Boys uh, because of Cinemalaya. I watched it specifically because I knew uh, that Kokoy was in it, that Royce Cabrera was in it, and some other folks who are um, also connected to BL series. So that's the only reason I watched yeah. Fuck Boys after uh, you know being a fan of Game Boys where Kokoy is and watching. Current things where Royce Cabrera is in, um, and then um, actually I, I found out you know, as I was watching it that Mix Villasis, who stars in In Between yes. the BL series, he actually has like a, a small part in Fuck Boys, and, and, and then Yayo Aguila, who plays uh, uh, Royce's female lover. Uh, Trisha um, in Fuck Boys is appearing as the mother of one of the leads in My Extraordinary, um, a BL series that is premiering on September 27, so next Sunday. Uh, so, so they're like uh, in one film. Imagine uh, you know you have like these uh, you know these four actors slash actresses who uh, you know now are part of the BL craze. So, so that's why I wanted to watch Fuck Boys. And, and how was your experience? Well, well, yeah. So, so we'll talk about that as we go through, um, you know, the the review, and uh, as we, you know, um, as we talk about it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that that that's why I uh, watch it, and I think Miles was just pressured to watch it because I was like, let's review this, let's <laughs> review this. Yeah. I have a friend, Orly, who you know I, can I, help I, us <laughs> talk about I, it. I've heard of fuck boys, and I. I've seen a few clips of it, and yeah. I was telling Tita Josie that I was a bit scared to watch it because of what I've heard. Yeah. That it's, you know, th- th- there's blood and there's violence. Yeah, and yeah. I just didn't want to yeah. see Royce doing something violent that might change my perception of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same goes with Kokoy. Because I first laid eyes on Kokoy uh, via Game Boys, right? Yeah. So I had that kind of like beautiful and and loving and affectionate yeah, yeah. Uh, image of Kokoy in my mind and so I wasn't ready to move on from that kind of of mm-hmm. Kokoy de Santos yet but yeah thanks to Tita Josie and to Orly uh, I've been exposed to a different type a different <laughs> of actually alam mo may, later we're gonna talk about it pero I think bagay na bagay kay Royce itong yeah itong yeah yeah We can talk more about that later. Yeah. And I was also surprised to see Mix Villas is in the pageant and yeah, uh, yeah. Yo Yo Angela and what she and Royce did in that movie. <laughs> so that content, but we'll talk about that later. As well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the way that we're gonna talk about this, or the way that I'd like to structure it, so it's a little bit more organized, is we'll talk about, um, you know, the uh, the movie in 
the what I term as like the three acts. I don't know if this these are the real three acts of the film, uh, but you know the the three different parts. Um, and um, yeah, we'll we'll just talk about our impressions and you know what we, uh, you know uh, what we thought uh, as we were watching those parts of the film. Okay, and then for anybody who is watching this who hasn't watched watch fuck boys just yet just know um you know um as tita miles and i say in all of our videos please expect spoilers especially if it's a review obviously you know this is not a reaction we're not going to watch um you know uh, fuck boys at the same time because we don't want to get like a copyright strike <laughs> you know um we we only have oh well we have i don't want to say only but we have 78 subscribers now hello Yay. Oh, Love it. <laughs> it's not quite Bye. the Thousands, but, yeah. <laughs> it's not the same as like the thousand that thousands of subscribers that the other reactors have but we're very thankful for the 78 whoever yeah. you are you know Three uh, we, weeks ago, yeah. we didn't even think that we were going to have subscribers yeah. <laughs> yeah, i don't know where any of you are from but thank you <laughs> for watching our reactions uh, but yeah like just know that um you know obviously this is a review so if you haven't watched fuck boys yet then please watch it it is available for free on youtube i don't know if that is legal or illegal but it is there <laughs> <laughs> so so just watch it uh, and Can you even say back. that <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna edit it out. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry if all of those links get like deleted after. But, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not gonna edit it out. So you know. So whatever. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, just in case, just watch it and then uh, you know come back after. All right. But how we're gonna review it is we'll talk about the three acts, um, and the first act is, uh, you know, um, is. Um, you know, all the way from the very beginning of the movie where we get to see uh, Royce, Kokoi, and Migs, uh, you know, in there, uh, the place where they were living up until the, uh, you know, up until the end the pageant. of the pageant. Yeah. So, um, so what were your initial impressions of that first half? Not, or first third, sorry, not first half. Well, that's the thing with Eduardo Roy, no? So Eduardo Roy Jr. is the director, yeah. and um, he's very keen on he. You attack him, Lino Broke. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I would Yeah, you, I, I, I wouldn't want to say that you know he he's he's copying Lino Broca, but mm. makikita naman natin na ang na ang isa sa mga inspirations niya Broca and Bernal, no? Yeah, yeah. The things uh pagdating sa being raw and being real yeah it's very gritty he would notice like, it was exactly. very gritty yeah nagsimula siya sa screen ng isang live stream right yeah. if i if i could remember you yeah, so yeah. makita mo na no, that there's this dun pa lang sa first few minutes you see that there nakita mo na yung goal ng kara hmm. ng mga characters then the goal of the characters is to be is to be what do you call this to be recognized, yeah, to get yeah. attention, yeah, yeah. May, may, may pangarap, may pangarap kung showbiz, you know, something yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's all about fans, it's all about following. Yeah, you know, na itong yeah. ginagawa nilang to ay para lamang, ay para lamang sa... It, it was like I mean, a way for them to escape it's, it's, their, yeah, their reality. Yeah, exactly. And then you go to the, you know, seeing the entire yeah. room na nagsisiksikan sila, you mm -hmm. know, and yeah. then there's the mama song. Yeah. And if 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 you if if you really look closely, it already shows yung set and set thing ng mga individuals, what their motivations are and where they are, what yeah. what, what yeah. their environment is. Yeah. You know? And it's really very far away from from what we see from how we see them on stage. Yeah, exactly. Diba? Later on. So parang pinakita agad niya doon siya nagsimula eh. Yeah. And exactly. uh, it's really very raw. At pinakita niya na ito, ito, isa itong negosyo, isa itong industriya, no? Yeah, yeah. Na parang alaga. And, uh, what I, uh, one of the things I also noticed as well um, is that they didn't outright say that where um, Ace, um, you know, who is played by Royce Cabrera um, or uh, Miko Ramos, um, who is played by Coco de Santos and, um, and Thor, 
uh, played by Mix Villasis. Um, you know, and, and incidentally, you know, Miko Ramos, right? So uh, that's the name of Coco de Santos's character. So that really caught my attention because that's the name of JC Alcantara in Hello Strangers. So I was like, mm, I wonder, if, I wonder if. As in exactly that same name, Miko Ramos. So I was like, hmm, is that where they got me? Uh, you know, Miko's name from you know, Hello Stranger. But anyway, uh, but what one thing that I noticed is that uh, they didn't outright say that they were living in a casa, uh, mm-hmm. but you could kind of like tell because uh, you know the way that their living conditions were, uh, and the fact that they had, like you said, a mama son who was like in charge of you know, uh, you know where they were living. Uh, Uh, you could tell that it really was a casa, and then for um, yeah, for for international viewers, a casa is basically a brothel. Um, so you know, um, and, and it seemed to me like um, you know when uh, the fact that they decided to show them in the casa first before they brought them to the bar uh, is kind of like showing that. Um, that really the main purpose of them being part of the pageant is for them to have more customers in the casa. Like I don't know if you got that that impression as well, but that that was kind of uh, like you, you know, know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Know. I mean, but, they. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, oh, parang parang oh, oh, ano, it makes sense. Yeah, that that it's being parang parang that's a platform. Yeah, that that's true. And, it could and also he, be uh, no, it could also be just a dormitory for them, mm-hmm. no? But if you think about it, hindi naman araw-araw merong male beauty pageant. Yeah, and uh, like um. I, I consider that also, but uh, if you notice when they left the casa or when they left there, okay, fine. Uh, assuming it was a dormitory, but the fact that um, by the entrance of the door they had the pictures of all of the pageants and they had the pictures of, like, um, of the you know, men, yeah, the boys. So it seemed like it was a lot more organized than just being a dormitory. Because if it was just a dormitory, you would not have pictures of the people who lived there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that were just transient. It's like uh, the fact that the pictures were there means that you really kept those people there. You really kept the men there for the purpose of, you know, yeah, you know, sex work or whatever. And going on live stream also while topless and kind yeah. of being touchy, clingy with the other person, like how they were, right? Yeah. Si Royce and Sikofi, they were like yeah. touchy and kind of giving me that lovey-dovey vibes in the beginning because I didn't yeah. have any idea it was a casa or a brothel at the beginning. Yeah. But the first thing that I thought was, okay, what are these two people doing? Are yeah, they trying yeah. to attract attention? And are they like prostitutes or call boys yeah, or trying yeah. to attract customers? And when it panned out, When the when the camera when when the camera panned out and then we saw the rest of the of the guys living with them in that cramped space and I realized that ah okay then something is up this is yeah. not your ordinary room yeah. where mercadas or friends yeah. stop this is kind of a holding area for yeah. maybe another yeah even like. Uh, even the the place where they took a bath, notice that there were no dividers between like um, you know the, the showers. They were basically just you know uh, using um, the tabo or you know the yeah um, uh, the, they were just using a scoop to get the water um, and they were like taking a bath right next to each other, uh, you know, with no dividers. That also for me is like it's a very casa setup. Not not to say that I've ever been in the casa, but. I mean, like, you, you don't have to be in one to know that, like, what their setup, what their the setup of their lev- living condition was, was not your ordinary, you know, they're just living in a, a dormitory or whatever. They they really were there, uh, put together because they were basically human traffic. So, okay, yeah. So, uh, so that that was kind of like my initial impression of it, um, and um, and then as they moved the scene, well, actually before they moved the scene, so Migs. Uh, was actually the one who, um, you know, as Thor, as the character of Thor. Um, I don't know if you recall. Um, he was talking to Royce um, in the very beginning, um, where he had just joined this multi-level marketing group, marketing. and he was, yeah, he was talking to Royce about like, uh, you know, hey, you might be interested in selling this product because you know they are, um, you know, they're. Uh, if you join, they, then you can really earn a lot. That for me was like really the beginning of fuckboy setting the stage for these are escape. people who are trying to escape their current exactly. condition. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what the story is about. It's all about escape. No? Yes. Yes. Literal Everything escape. Really 
and then also yeah, figurative the, as well. Yeah, right? figurative escape. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, and so we saw them like after the the scene in the casa where it was kind of like established that you know they were part of the uh, you know the 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 guys who were um, in in the brothel. Then we saw them get into the the van um, and go into um, make their way to. Uh, to Mr. Uh, to Mr. Galaxy, uh, to mankind, uh, the Mr. To mankind, Galaxy yes. um, 2019 yeah. uh, pageant, yeah. um, and that also for me was like uh, you know it was another signal that uh, that they really were being human trafficked uh, because uh, the fact that they didn't take public transport, that they didn't uh, you know ride mm. a jeepney. Um, and that they were actually put in a van so that they couldn't escape or they couldn't, escape. Uh, you know, um, they they were basically chaperoned all the way from where they lived until, uh, you know, the place where they would, um, you know, have the pageant. Have the, yeah, have the pageant. It, it's like they were, yeah, I mean, okay, they called their mama-san, uh, what did they call her, like mama or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, but... Yeah. Uh, but you could tell that they were they were heavily guarded, um, even if it was just the mama san, the driver. Um, you know, uh, the fact that they were put in a van doesn't mean that they were taken care of. It means that uh, they were products that they were controlled. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. They were products and yeah. they were controlled. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, and I think that is how it works. Right? Yeah. Na yeah. Uh, you get into like uh, it, like a casa like that, and then yeah. someone takes care of your agenda or your yeah. schedules and your costumes and yeah. which contests are you going to join. And then one person earns something out of that, right? The yeah, mama yeah. san probably gets a yeah. commission from it. Yeah. But of course, the responsibility is to take care of the guys and make sure they look good because you could see in that scene that everyone's getting fixed right from the hair yeah. to the bikini yeah. Yeah. yeah the bikini <laughs> etc right um so it's it's highly organized i can say i'm not sure if yeah, it's, it's considered trafficking um, it, it, but it it's is. definitely highly it organized and people are profiting from it i mean whether yeah. they are willing or or not yeah they're into that act and that is how yeah. They're trying to earn money for the meantime and then eventually escape to a better exactly. life. That's what Tita well, dun din naman sa, when it comes to the uh, you know, conversations about them being being imprisoned or you know being secured and being treated as a product, I, ako naman, what I see is, I mean, yung may comfortable passivity. So mm. they're, they're, they're very passive, they're very accepting. I mean, this mm. could also be. I mean, you know, if, if 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 others would look at it as human trafficking, these people, our characters, are are very comfortable about it. Are quite mm. comfortable about yeah. it. I mean, mm. you know, yes, there is a need to escape. They see, nakikita nila na there is still a chance to move on. Yeah. From 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 right. where I am now, but for now, I'm I, I I'm I'm good with this. No. Yeah. And and I I think it's also very That's important for you, you acceptance right. of yeah. of. of the acceptance of control versus yeah. accept uh, and later on resistance of control yeah yeah diba? Parang may exactly. ganun, ano? Uh-oh. and and um and I, I get where 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 you're coming from also because like especially in the van when miko first finds out from the mama san that he actually got accepted on the the telephone yeah, yeah. yes, yes. um you know when, when he finds out that he got the audition um i don't think he would have gotten that actually if he hadn't entered that casa because it seems it was the mama san who introduced him to the producer exactly. of the telephone area and although again it wasn't um it wasn't really said uh explicitly in the film but i'm guessing like the producer or whoever was actually a client of uh of miko as well too or he was mm-hmm. also a client of the mama san because like if you connect like the that dots helps. uh that you know uh and later like um, in act two we find out that actually the mayor uh you know who is watching all throughout act one like in the upper uh, balconies of the bar right uh, you know, there is no way, there is no way that the Mama San would have let Miko and Ace uh, 
uh, or there's no way that she would have allowed them to go on their own back own. home. Yeah. If yeah. she didn't know that the mayor was waiting for Ace for and them. Nico. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, it right. was not explicitly mentioned, but just knowing what I know about people who are in that situation, it is impossible. Like, you would not let your so-called product uh, escape because you would you make money off of them, right? Which is why, like, uh, you know, um, like like as you were saying, Milo. Like, okay, fine. Maybe to a certain extent, they were they entered the casa at that point. But at that point, it's like uh, it's like. One of those situations where you make you make a deal with the devil. It's like, uh, you know, uh, yeah. once you enter that deal, that's it. Your your soul is sold. So you know, your body right. is sold. So um, you're yeah. you're stuck unless you, uh, you know, uh, unless that's you find a way trying. out. Yeah. Right to find a way out. Correct. Yeah. So there is willingness, I would say, from uh, on their part also, and they recognize that this is where they're at, and they have dreams of moving on to the next level or moving out of that situation because, in the end, the goal is to have a better life. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, when they arrived at the the contest, uh, you know, j- just a, a few things that that I noticed as well too, um, and maybe some things that you can recall. Like I remember that um, as they were uh, preparing, um, even just like the prayer that they had uh, before the contest oh. actually started, uh, like nice. uh, you know, yeah. it, it, it's a very Filipino thing that you know, in the middle <laughs> of of uh, a all, bar. yeah. <laughs> In the middle of a gay bar with male prostitutes, (laughs) you know, (laughs) you know, uh, let's let's center ourselves in the presence of the Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Holding hands, diba? Yung magkakahawak ang kamay. Like, like it, like you know what flashback, uh, you know, in in my memory is like when I used to go to Malate, there was like this in the middle of all of this debauchery and whatever. There was like this, uh, you know, in the middle of all of these gay clubs and all of these gay bars. Out of nowhere is like this one tiny shop that was selling Catholic goods, and then there was like a picture <laughs> of like the Pope and Mother Teresa. And like, every time I would pass that, you know, that that shop after having been in like Red Banana, you know, Omar and Ben, I was Shalou. like, "What the hell is this store doing in the middle of Malate?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only in the Philippines. Uh, only in the Philippines. So, so I just found that scene so like so you know that that prayer scene for me was like so ironic and at the same time so very Filipino. You know, yeah. like <laughs> I laughed yeah. when I saw them I realized that okay, wait, they're praying, but aren't they like yeah. pageant and then yeah. they're gonna kind of sell themselves? Yeah. yeah. So right. I how, uh, how uh, on the uh, on the one hand we're so religious and on the other parang they they are justifying what they're doing yeah, like being yeah, in a yeah. bar is they're earning a living and they want Jesus to, yeah. <laughs> to help, help them, them. Yeah. Right? yeah that yeah. night right so yeah well, and, I just and it, it, it's such yeah. a very Filipino thing to not see that there's any uh, what do you call it? There's no cognitive dissonance about it. It's like you yeah. know, <laughs> it, it it's like you know, yeah, this is what I do for a living, but is it doesn't mean that God has forgotten me or whatever, which is kind of sweet actually, right? Well, uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's just weird. For me, yeah. naman, yeah. for me, naman, yung 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 prayer meeting, yung prayer, yung that moment when they you know started holding hands and prayed together. Um, for, for me, it's more of like. A reflection of how they take this seriously. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. like this is something uh, apart from what I want in my life. This is also something that I take seriously. Yeah, this is not just a run-of-the-mill exercise or something that let's just have it over and done yeah, with. I yeah, mean, yeah. there are there's this there's this depth of there's this depth of importance and yeah, value yeah, in what yeah. they're doing and it says so much about that moment that 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 rare silent moment before the pageant so yeah um it could be you know more of like 
na Filipino overture to something great, di ba? Yung magdasal, yeah, di ba? Yeah, exactly. And um, it, it makes them very human at that point. Yeah. No? Yeah. Um, tapos andun pa yung Mama San, no? Yeah. Oh, Siya pa yung nag-lead ng prayer talaga. Siya yung nag-lead yeah, ng yeah. prayer. And yeah. everyone talaga really like stood up, paid attention, and closed their eyes. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, 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 I think, I, I think, I think too that it's they're not just praying to win tonight. Probably, you know, with the goals that they have in mind, it's also yeah, about exactly. praying about, you know, escaping this life, yeah. you know, yeah. escaping this world. Exactly, and you know, like, um, yeah, like um, I, I just wanted to bring it back to a point that you mentioned earlier about how um, you know the the director really uh, Eduardo Roy really likes to make things very gritty and very realistic um, you know um, uh, I, I have to vouch for the reality of what they showed in this first act because my first boyfriend um, you know uh, Rolly uh, was in that world he was actually like um, you know um, kind of like a a manager of a bar or a restaurant but uh, in his case like he was managing female talents um, although like outwardly they would say that uh, you know no um, our um, our girls are not prostitutes like you can't bring them out um, you know uh, and that kind of stuff but it still happened like um, you know um, in um, in fuck boys we saw that the clientele were yeah like um, you know L- the LGBT community. We saw the mayor there, so people who are influential. Uh, whereas in my uh, first boyfriend's bar, it was mainly like Japanese customers because this was like early, um, early 2000s, so like 2000, 2001. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's it, the parallels are very, very similar. So I can say, like, based on my own experience and what I saw when I was dating my first boyfriend, uh, they really showed what. Uh, what the realities are and then like um, even like the the male pageants uh, itself like I remember um, you know bars or um, you know places like Basilica in in Malate that would have contests like this and the way that they presented it is exactly like how I remember like the male pageants um, you know in these in Mm -hmm. these places and Basilica wasn't even like you know a gay bar Basilica was a comedy bar Uh, but because it was like in the middle of like Malate like uh, at the time Time, it was the gay capital of Manila, right? Uh, you know, um, like it really, uh, the way that they shot this first act really brought back like a lot of memories of how I remember, um, you know, uh, I used to hang out in these bars like 15, 20 years ago even. So it was very, yeah. very it's really an industry. And if you would, yeah, it's you know, a big industry. Yeah. yeah. If you day. would remember, the comedy bars would earn a lot that night when they would do bikini Yes, events. yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They would right, promote like better. months ahead. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. True. And there'll be, there'll be a few like celebrity guests probably, or yeah. you mga star dancers, right? Yeah. To boost uh, attendance or ticket yeah. sales. Yeah. And Up and let's not. Day. And let's not discount the fact that, you know, the, the major prizes, even I think um, in Fuck Boys, I can't remember uh, exactly, but like the major prize or the first prize was like 10,000 pesos. I mean, come on, like if you are, uh, if you are someone who is in a casa, um, you know, where maybe the most you could get, um, you know, per client is like 500 pesos, um, you know, 10,000 pesos is a big deal. You could really like, uh, like, I don't know how much of that would go to the mamasan or how much would go to your pimp, so to speak, um, and how much you could actually take home uh but that's a, a lot of money that you could send home to your family right so you know um, yeah um okay um and then um uh, we also saw in act one uh very very briefly yayo Aguila as trisha who was um you know the the lover of ace uh, played by rock uh, by royce cabrera um and she had just a very very brief scene but um what i uh, what i also uh, you know took from the part that she was in is uh, you know how she gave the passports to um, to Ace's character, right? You know, yeah. again, this is aside from Miko getting the call about being in the tele 
Pelisseria. If that didn't work, then they had another out. They had another way of escaping by having these passports. Right. They could now finally leave the yeah. country. Like I don't know how long they would be able to stay outside, but just simply getting out of the Philippines, where you experience all of this oppression, where you experience being human trafficked, um, even just for a very brief moment, is like it's a big thing for people who, uh, you know, maybe the only thing that they've The only places they've ever been to are the province where they're from and Manila, and then that's it, and that's all they know, right? So to be able to leave the country, even if it's just for a very brief moment, is a a very very big thing, right? So you know, right? Um, natatandaan ko yon, no? So hindi ako nagpost agad sa Facebook na napanood ko yung Fuck Boys, but yeah. I was so overwhelmed with the films that with the film that I wanted to say to share something, yeah. In Facebook, tas isa lang yung pinos ko. Mm. Yayo Aguila, tas tatlong exclamation point. Yeah. <laughs> Amin natin niya. She was so impactful. Even in, oh like, my God. She was only there like a few minutes. but Only like a few minutes. Yeah. Oh Pero nakita mo yung ano, oh kissing scene na yun. Sa, yeah. Saan sa, sa ka ba nakakita ng ganon? Yeah. May iba pa ba? <laughs> parang mukbang. Parang <laughs> <laughs> ano na na parang parang mukbang? Oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> <O>, di ba? <laughs> Wait, nakakalok ka. Ang lengwa. Lengwa I mean... estufat. <laughs> yeah. Di ba? Oh parang ang ganda. Ang ganda. Kasi Talaga ba? Saktan ako parang sabi ko, Royce, why are you doing this? Ako pumapalakpak. I mean, I was I was clapping the whole time. I mean, you know, knowing Yayo Aguila, she, ever since she married, she got, you know, mm-hmm. uh, she got married, had kids. I mean, you know, mommy-mommy na siya eh. Diba? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, here she is, shining, glowing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, she's in her mid-40s or probably in her late yeah. 40s, but, She's still beautiful. Yes. And then, she yung boyfriend niya yung isa sa mga candidates. Yeah. Correct. Diba? Oh. At meron siyang passports. Tuloy na tuloy na tayo. Yeah, exactly. Diba? Parang exactly. panalo panalo yung character. Exactly. Exactly. And diba, tapos, kasama pa niya si ano? Si, uh, what's his name? I'm sorry. Si si Royce and si Kokoy, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Exactly. Sabay sabay diba? sila. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the the appearance of uh, of Trisha or Yayo Agina in uh, in the first act actually um, that was the start of the transition into the second act, where we got to know the connection between Ace and Miko and the mayor. Because all this while, while um, you know, uh, while Trisha was there, and actually even before Ace, played by Royce, uh, you know, he. Uh, he was ignoring the the text messages from Bethany. From Brit, Brit, Brittany. 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 Yes. Brittany. 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 Yeah. Brittany. Um, and we didn't know that um, you know uh, that it was actually the mayor who was Brittany at the time. We just thought it was like another chick, another you know, another girl. Another girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it was. I was so shocked. Uh, yeah. uh, I was shocked. Yeah. yeah. When I found out about it. So. And then when mm. and then when we finally entered, you know, the second mm. act. Uh, and we find out that actually Brittany uh, is the mayor, the mayor. who yeah. all this while in Act One was watching. Yeah, I was kind of like, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't say that I was shocked, but I was like, oh, it makes a lot more sense now, right? Uh, it's code and, name. Yes. Diba? Code, it's, it's a code, code name. name. Yeah. That yes. was Tarek a role. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Tarek, <laughs> oh, oh. A role din ng lola yeah. mo during uh-huh. the actual party and play. <laughs> Yes, yes. And then um um and then, you know, Ace as he was going through the pageant was very very uh, disturbed because Brittany or you know, we didn't know it was the mayor at the time, but Brittany was sending him the video that uh that Brittany had taken of Royce uh and or um uh, Ace and Miko uh, you know, Uh, right. In a very compromising yeah. situation. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I have a question, guys. Are those prosthetics or the real thing? <laughs> I think they're the real thing because it's an indie film, and you know, uh, I don't know. Uh-huh. Like... Uh, okay. <laughs> Super fun. Royce. It's just stuck in my head. No, I had to replay that scene like five times. <laughs> But did I just see? Wait, 
wait, is that Hungarian sausage? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but 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 the reason um, I asked you, Tita Josie, hmm. I, I've seen one film on uh, sa Gaga Ulala, and yeah. there was kind of a similar scene where the you know the penis was shown, yeah. and it was prosthetic. Uh, ah, okay. But okay. my friend told me, eh, prosthetic lang yun. But it looked so real with matching set of fill for the body yeah. to wear. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So I don't know. N- nag-flashback lang sa akin kaya napakwestion ako whether Royce yeah. went up to that point na parang he's yeah. willing to expose himself full erection and all in a yeah. movie, in a movie for the sake of art. So wala lang. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yeah, like um, you know, Uh, so they find out that uh, that Britney is planning to distribute the video in case uh, you know Ace doesn't answer the uh, the call. So then, uh, so so ah. Ace makes the call finally at the end of the pageant after he reveals to Nico that you know, hey, uh, Britney has this video of us, and of course Nico is in panic mode because he just found out that he had been accepted on the tele serie. Uh, so he didn't want to compromise like this opportunity that you know hey i i can finally escape now you know uh, i found an out like yeah. uh, you know we have to find a way uh, for um for for this video to be deleted so that my dreams of escaping this life i'm in don't get shattered um, and that starts the entire second act 